Hmm. I awaken on Monday to a sharp rap on the door. Ah, it's crappy. Miss Patuti, if you please. Stepping outside, I spot Professor Grabener and clutch protectively at my robes. I'm just out of bed and feeling vulnerable. I was not expecting to be facing him this early in the morning. <laughs> my glasses are ridiculous! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> Pardon my attire, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Is there a problem? Um, no. <sighs> he sighed and hands me a folder bulging with papers. The label on it reads election protocol. Alright. Does it say reach? Reads. Ahem. <clears throat> You will review these documents and meet me after class today to discuss your campaign strategy. Unless you prefer to forfeit now and save us both the trouble. No, sir. Hm. Very well, then. Good day to you. <laughs> Good day. How much strategy is involved in this election, anyway? I suppose I'll find out this afternoon. First, I have to decide on my schedule for this week. What should I do this week? Well, hmm. Maybe we'll study and then do a red and then do a red and then do a sleep and then do a gym. Something like that. <laughs> I can't get over my stupid glasses. <laughs> Um, I arrive in the empty conference room and take a seat, spreading out the folder's worth of papers in front of me. The elections are held on Friday afternoon. Before then, I have to decide on a campaign slogan, do promotions, and write a speech to convince people to vote for me. That's not much time. I'm still not entirely sure what the class treasurer does. Usually that means organizing fundraisers, but I haven't heard about any of those here yet. Anyway, most fundraiser money comes from parents, but... Since this is a boarding school, our parents aren't here to get money from. Maybe that's the point. Maybe as the treasurer, I'm supposed to think of some creative ways to get around the problems with raising money for a tiny school that's kind of isolated. Oh, someone's coming. Professor Grabener enters the room. Would it be too much to hope that you've already made your decisions? <laughs> Alright, this is Mr. Winky Face. Just a minute. Sorry to burst in, sir. I promised my sister I'd serve as Cutie's campaign manager. You don't have to stay. I know how much you have to do. I can talk her through the steps and deliver the requisitions to you later. Is this what you want, Miss Petiti? No, I don't really want to work with William, but I know it would make Virginia happy, so... Sorry, sweet, sweet Hieronymus. Mm. Yes, I think that's best. Very well, then. He nods to William and leaves the room. Alright, let's get started. First things first, you need a campaign slogan. Something to set you apart from Jacob and tell people why they should vote for you. He's campaigning on charm, wealth, and family status. You don't have that. But all his charms don't necessarily make him likable. Especially his voice. <laughs> You want to give people the idea that he's flash in your substance, that you can do the job and they should trust you with their money. So I think we'll call you the Dependable Draft Horse. Oh boy. That was... that was Ellen's. Your imagery can be a horse pulling a wagon. No, a coach. Okay. Because the time frame for elections is so short, the school provides the marketing materials. All we have to do is give them an order and the basic outlines. So we won't have to stay up all night with markers and scissors. Uh, did Virginia remember to tell you about the budget? What budget? Right. The school provides the materials, but you do have to pay for them. You absolutely want at least posters or badges. That's the basics. That reminds everyone who's running. 
Badges are probably better. People find it fun to collect them, so they'll naturally help spread them around. You can give away food. Everyone likes free food, but then it's gone and they may not even remember who gave it to them. Uh, Alright, I only have ten bucks. I'll buy the badges. I order badges for five bucks. Hmm... Ah, uh, sure. Posters. <laughs> I don't have any more money! Okay. I'll put the order in and someone should drop things off at your room in the morning. See you later! Bye, William. First thing in the morning, the campaign materials arrive. I have a stack of six posters, each one saying, The Dependable Draft Horse for Treasurer. Vote for Cutie Patootie. I miss my lady lampshade head. <laughs> we'll need to find some places around campus to tape these up. I have a collection of green paper horse carriages, each with cutie patootie for treasurer on them in gold ink, and street pins for fastening them to robes. We'll have to find somewhere high traffic to hand these out. Okay, are we ready? I suppose. Go team cutie. Thank you, Virginia. Alan, Virginia, and I spend the next hour catching passerby, introducing me as a candidate, and giving them my badges to wear. This is a good way to get my name out there, but it's tiring and boring. Stress increased. Uh, I didn't even, I didn't know about that. I would have slept. Oh, I actually did something. <laughs> when did I set up sleep? <laughs> I can't remember. On Wednesday morning, campaigning is in full swing. All the candidates, not just in my year, but the upperclassmen too, have taken up positions on the main quad, calling out to everyone who passes and handing them colorful bits of paper. It's loud and crowded and confusing. Some of the older candidates are spraying magic sparkles over their heads to try and draw more attention to themselves, which just makes it worse. Angela for president! Kerrigan for secretary! Vote for Jacob! Vote for me! I'm doing my best to make myself heard among the crowd, but it's hard work. William is with me, lending his voice, and his height is and his height is definitely helping. Also, he remembers the names of all the freshmen, and they always seem pleased to have him single them out. Male or female, a lot of people admire William. I don't know why. He weirds me out. <laughs> I think he winks too much. Wow! Wow! Yay, all my stress is gone. Excellent. And I got stronger. After activities on Friday, each class has a scheduled time to come to the gym, where the officer candidates will make their final speeches before elections. Since we can't vote in the senior election, there's no reason for us to have to listen to their speeches, or vice versa. The freshman slot is the last one in the day. I came in earlier to watch the end of the sophomore campaigns, hoping for some inspiration. I have a slightly better idea of what kinds of things to say, but they all have pros and cons. First up are the candidates for freshman class president. Minnie Cochran climbs onto the stage looking bright-eyed and enthusiastic, and says a bunch of stuff about offering a helping hand to other students. Everyone applauds. <laughs> then Suki Sato wanders up and starts talking about how she found a caterpillar once that turned into a lizard instead of a moth. Or something like that. It's a little hard to follow. Oh, and apparently the spirits told her to run for president? Or some spirits. She's not sure which ones. Everyone applauds, but not as loudly. After that come the presentations for treasurer. Jacob Blazing, the Blazing Fire, struts up and gives a very brief speech about how money is obviously in safe hands with him, and he knows how to spend it, too. Everyone claps, and some guy even hoots in approval. <laughs> then it's my turn. <laughs> my classes. Hi, my name is Cutie Patootie, and I'm running for class treasurer. In managing money, I will... Um... Yeah, I'll still reduce waste. I will reduce waste by eliminating unnecessary red tape and record keeping so that we can focus our funds on what's important. It will be, it will be my job to manage class fundraising events. I will... Promote existing events. Because I remember that Grabby said tradition is important from last time. I will work hard to promote our traditional events so that they will be more successful than ever. 
the most important thing that I bring to the table as treasure is my awesome glasses. <laughs> Class spirit and dedication. When it comes to money, I will leave no stone unturned. So please vote for the. De 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 <laughs> so please vote for the dependable draft horse. Yeah. Everyone applauds for some reason. At last, it's time for the actual voting. Everyone lines up single file in the hallway leading to one of the classrooms. One at a time, we go inside to cast our votes. Each student is given a pencil and two pieces of paper containing the list of names for each office. You circle the name you want to vote for, then drop the paper into a box. For president, I will vote for Minnie. For treasurer, I will vote for myself. Right, that's that. I'm still shocked you can vote for yourself. After all the votes are counted, we assemble again in the gym for the results. The position of freshman class treasurer will be held by... Cutie Patootie! I won! And I'm proud to announce that this year's freshman class president will be... Minnie Cochran! I'd like to thank you all for your hard work this week. You students are what make Iris Academy truly great. The teachers will be seeking out the newly elected officers later today to discuss their positions. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend! Thank you. <coughs> so, you were successful. Yes, sir. Very well. Take these keys. He hands me a small loop of chain about the size of a bracelet with three bronze keys hanging from it. And report here at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning to begin your duties. Five? You were aware of what your duties would involve, weren't you? Uh. After all, you were given all the information ahead of time. Mm, right. Maybe I should have spent less time campaigning and more time reading the information booklet. Ah, <sighs> Grabby's such a tease. When I push the blankets aside, the room is dark and cold. Alan and Virginia are still asleep. I should be too. Why did I think this was a good idea? <laughs> The door was locked, but Professor Grabner gave me a key. I also had the key for the metal box I see sitting on the table next to the stack of envelopes. The professor isn't here. Why should he be? This is boring, pointless work, and now it's my job. Class treasurer. Class filing agent, more like. One envelope for each student to be labeled with his or her name. Five dollars for each student to be extracted from the cash box and placed in the relevant envelope. Any mistakes and they'll know exactly who to blame. Then I have to go through the crate of mail and line up anything received with the student it's supposed to go to. And then I have to go around to every freshman dorm room and deliver the mail and the allowances. And I have to do this every single Saturday for the rest of the year. <laughs> As I'm making my rounds, I reach Butterfly Hall and stop in surprise. There's a huge bouquet pushed up against one of the doors. That's Minnie's room. Of course, it's Pastel's room, too. I wonder which one of them it's for. Probably Pastel. Everybody thinks she's cute. She must have boys all over the place. I've never gotten flowers like that. I did get a pie, though. Does that count? And I never, and I never did find out who sent that. <laughs> oh well, on with the work. Yeah, pie. At last, it's done and I'm free for the day. What should I do today? Um, -da 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 -da. Hmm. I did study already, so I guess I'll go to the mall and the food court. Maybe I'll run into Virginia. Uh, food court. Uh, same thing. And then I didn't run into Virginia. Oh, I did run into Virginia. I see Virginia at a table waving at me. Hey, cutie, over here. Coming closer, I stop and stare in awe at the monstrosity on the table in front of her. There's a cookie, then two brownies, each cut diagonally into triangles and set around the edges of the cookie like the rays of a pastry sun. Then a fat, fat, then a fat, a fat scoop of chocolate ice cream rippled with peanut butter and a smaller scoop of vanilla perched on it like a crown. Over the whole mess are whirls of whipped cream and a scattering of chopped nuts and chocolate sprinkles. Oh, <sighs> man, that sounds good. 
The only thing missing is a cherry on top. Judging by the stems on the side of the plate, the cherries didn't last long. Are you going to eat that whole thing? You can have a bite if you want. One bite? <laughs> no, we can share if you want. Well, I didn't eat anything. Sure. Hand me a spoon. Dig in! The giant sundae is deliciously decadent, and I'm hungry. It might be a bad idea to stuff myself on nothing but dessert, but with Virginia on the other side of the table eating just as eagerly, it's hard to stop myself. Of course, after this, we'll both have a massive sugar rush. Wanna run laps around the dorm? Is that why you're so hyper all the time, eating stuff like this? Not really. I just like being on the go. Finally, we make it down to the plate, and I sit back and sigh. Replete. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Too bad I didn't have more stress. I should have negative stress. Uh, it's Sunday, and the sports club is having a meeting. Or rather, a game. Virginia's got the ball and is dribbling it across the floor towards Ellen at the goal. Keo cuts in to try and steal, but Virginia sidesteps. A twist, a lunge, a swift kick, and the ball flies through the air. What are you guys doing? Nobody pays any attention to him until after Ellen has successfully blocked the goal. Yay, Ellen. This is a sports club meeting. What are you doing here? Maybe I want to play. I'm a fit guy, right? Fine, whatever. Alright. He closes his eyes briefly and a wave of green magic sweeps over him. Hey, you can't do that. Do what? No magic allowed. What are you talking about? We're wizards. This is a real... I mean, this is real sports, not bounders. What's going on? This one says you guys are refusing to use magic. What's the point of that? This one? Well, that's how we've been doing it in Sports Club. That's just wrong. It's unnatural. You're letting your talents go to waste. Come on, it'll be fun. You want to show off your skills, don't you? Who's for flying basketball? No, there is no magic allowed in Sports Club. Maybe we should take a vote on it. You're with me, right, Q? Mm, yeah. Traitor. Cutie. No magic allowed. I don't think it's a good idea. We're only freshmen, but we've got players from all four years, and we all know completely different spells. I couldn't play flying basketball. I can't fly. There, see? Without magic, it's just kitty games. Why should we have to hold back from the best we can do? Yeah, we should be real. Real losers? Virginia! Um... Because it's the rules. People without magic still have to hold back. You don't pick up the ball in soccer. You don't beat up the other team to stop them from reaching the goal. You do your best within the rules. That's good sportsmanship. <laughs> Maybe we could have a special game sometime with spells allowed, but only certain spells, so it's fair. Eh, uh, I guess. Ellen looks at Jacob. Do you still want to play? Call me when you play a real game. <laughs> he leaves. <laughs> Why are boys so rude? William isn't. <laughs> okay, boys except William. Come on, let's get back to the game. Indeed. Let's read our diary. Campaign planning. I met with William to decide on a theme for my election campaign and order supplies. Badges and handshakes. Ellen, Virginia, and I spent the morning distributing campaign materials and promoting me to potential voters. Campaign madness. The election is at a fever pitch today with everyone trying to win by outshouting everyone else. What a mess. Election results. The elections were held today. Minnie Cochran is class president and I am now treasurer. Delivery duty. As class treasurer, it's my job to deliver the mail and the allowances to all the freshmen on Saturday mornings. 
Jacob intrudes. Jacob burst into the sports club meeting today to try and tell us we should be playing games using magic instead of just normal sports. Virginia was not happy. Can't blame her. Hey, Virginia. Happy Thanksgiving! Huh? But it's Colum- No! It's not that day. Not here. Why not? That guy caused a lot of trouble. We don't say his name. My fault. I should have told you guys earlier. The way the native people and the newcomers mixed out is a little different than it is for the non-magical history. We have strong ties, is what my mom says. Sacred Smoke takes, like, a fourth of all the magical students in the U.S. And around here, the local spirits were dealing with them way before us. So a lot of our rituals and celebrations come from them. So this is Thanksgiving? Not really, I was kidding. It's Canadian Thanksgiving. You're Southern, so you don't notice it as much. Oh! Anyway, what should I do this week? I've got no stress. Um... Let's study again and do red, 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 and then do a gym. I think. <laughs> what happened there? The track skipped or jumped or something. Ooh. Ah, new spell. Flames. A burst of fire damages everything in the area. Could be useful. Well, this week's flying by. Woo. Oh, hey. Virginia is taking gym class today too, but she seems unusually quiet. You okay? Huh? Yeah. Are you done? With class? Um, uh, yeah, I guess. Let's go back. Okay. I follow beside her, but even her footsteps seem subdued. What's going on, girl? Something is wrong. I'm just thinking. Uh-huh. We return to our room, and she sits on her bed with a sigh. <sighs> when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? I don't know. I don't think I ever settled on one thing in particular. What about you? I wanted to be a professional athlete. I wanted to play in the Olympics and be on TV and have my face on cereal boxes. But I knew what I had to grow up to be was a witch. Can't you do both? No. It's not allowed. Witches aren't allowed to be athletes or rock stars or anything. Anything that might make them famous. Anything that might make them seem. Once we get our magic, we're not allowed to compete with the people who don't, because they think we'll cheat. Or because we might get excited and do magic by accident. I don't want to be a witch. Magic is boring. I want what I always wanted. That's interesting. But I can't have it. I see why she's frustrated, and why she didn't want there to be any magic at the sports club. But there's something I don't understand. If you don't want to be a witch, then why are you? I mean, you made the choice, right? Couldn't you have just said no? The choice doesn't work the same way if you're a born witch. What do you mean? For you, it's like, choose magic, choose to jump through all these hoops to prove you're good enough to be a witch, or choose to say no and they take your magic away forever, right? Right. What do you think happens to a wild seed who says no? They... don't get to be witches? How do you think they make sure nobody tells anybody about magic? Um... They take away your magic and your memory so you never know you even had the choice. You never know magic existed. Your life goes on like it was. They wipe your memory? That's not very nice. It's all secrets. Nobody who isn't magical is allowed to know about magic. You have to forget. So if you're born magic, if your family is magic, to forget about magic you'd have to forget your whole life? How would that work? They... they're not going to kill you, are they? 
Of course not. They'd send me away. They'd make me forget my friends, my family, everything. They'd give me a new life somewhere else where I could be normal. And they'd make sure I never came back. <sighs> I choose my family, but I'm not happy about it. That sucks. Yeah. Well, that's life, right? I guess, but man, that sucks. <laughs> Aw, I'm so sorry, Virginia. I had no idea. I'm alone in my room when I hear a knock on the door. Hello, cutie. Um, hi. I'm just making the rounds to invite everyone to the Saturday study sessions. If you need help with any of your classes, I'll be available in the library on Saturdays. Uh, thanks. Okay, bye. Bye, Minnie. On Saturday morning, I delivered the mail. What should I do? Oh. No. Yeah, I already studied this week. Uh, let's go to the food court. Maybe Virginia will be there again. No food. Nope, not today. Alrighty. Uh, diary. Canadian Thanksgiving. Apparently, Columbus is a taboo subject in the magical world. Virginia says witches and wizards aren't even supposed to say his name. He's just that guy, or you know who. Therefore, this is not Columbus Day. Virginia's Dilemma. Virginia wanted to be a professional athlete when she grew up, but she's not allowed to because she's a witch. And she can't stop being a witch unless she wants to have her mind wiped and lose her whole family. Man, that majorly sucks. 